Deployment is a hard topic to talk about because there are so many little details that go into a successful deployment. But there are some pillars of deployment that I want to talk about because they are super important. Things that you want to do on every deployment run for every application that you are deploying to production. Now, why am I talking about all of this? Well, we need to talk about some things that you can do in every single uh, app that you have to make your deployments better. What does better even mean? Well, here's what I like out of my deployments. Optionality. Optionality is the ability to change things if you need to, to choose from various options. Why do we want optionality? Well, I like two things, two main things. I like the ability to choose when I deploy. This often means adding an approval process to your deployment pipeline. I don't want to push errors. If you have someone on your team who pushes errors up all the time, you might want to set an approval process so that they can't do that. You might have developers ignoring SOC 2 requirements where they need a, an approval to push to production, right? So you need to enforce that. You might have engineering managers who don't understand that they are managers anymore and think they are engineers and push breaking code on the weekend and you get alerts and all of a sudden you have to wake up and fix stuff, right? Nobody wants that. Another thing I like to do is the ability to change how I deploy, right? And this for me means creating a deployable build artifact on any push to main or, you know, on a tag, whatever, however you deploy your application or when you deploy your application, which means our code is packaged up in a way that is ready to go to production as is. What does all this mean? There's one thing that you need to make all of this happen. You need a CI pipeline, right? You need to use GitHub Actions, um, whatever GitLab and Bitbucket offers. I don't remember off the top of my head. Um, you can use I don't know, Travis, does anyone use Travis CI anymore? I don't know, Circle CI, Chipper CI, whatever. Some kind of CI pipeline that gives you optionality, that gives you the ability to change how and when to deploy your applications. Okay, so for a quick demonstration, we are gonna set up GitHub Actions. What we're gonna do is one, set up an approval process. And two, we're gonna see how to create a deployable build artifact that you can keep handy for use later. And then three, everyone is gonna please hit that subscribe button. Okay, so within your GitHub project, go to project settings, and we are going to head to the environments section. I have created a new environment. It literally just looks like clicking the new environment button, naming it, and configuring the environment. For my staging environment, I configured literally nothing. I just want staging versus production to be separate environments, right? If I go back and into my production environment, we have one protection rule. That protection rule is just required reviewers. So if a GitHub action is marked as being in the production environment, somebody has to approve that uh, step. Those steps run in GitHub Actions before they are run. So let's see what that looks like in a GitHub Action. Okay, so on push to main, we're gonna run our test, right? So we have a job here. The section is called test. So within test, we have a bunch of steps and that just uh, runs pest, our pest unit test, right? So whatever. Then we have deploy staging and deploy production. So deploy staging needs tests to pass, right? So the test stuff up here need, all needs to pass. Uh, it's set to the environment staging. It runs up into latest, whatever. And the steps here is just a deploy step. And all it's doing here in this case is deploying through a forge quick deploy. But here we trigger the forge quick deploy uh, manually with a webhook instead of enabling the webhook within forge's settings, right? So we decide, we decide when to deploy this code. Now, every push to main is going to deploy to staging, and presumably in our little workflow here, someone's going to review staging and say, yeah, this is good to go. Then we can deploy to production. Now, deploy to production here is going to uh, have a little hourglass where it says it's just waiting to deploy, and then someone will have to actually click to approve that, right? Here's what it looks like. And then it'll deploy to production. Now, deploy to production is exactly like deploying to staging, right? Except uh, well, the environment is production, right? So it's protected. It needs the approval step now, and it needs the test to pass, and it needs deploy staging, so all of that to pass. Great. So we have given ourselves optionality here by requiring a approval step for deployment to happen. Okay, the other thing I like to do is to build a production-ready artifact that we can deploy or not deploy or whatever uh, if we want to. So um, what do I mean by not deploy sometimes? Well, I actually am still going to use Forge Quick Deploys in this example, but I'm also going to build a deployable build artifact. And the reason is because I might change how I deploy in the future and that might require an artifact, right? We're building in optionality for ourselves. We are going to end up with a zip file. That zip file is going to have all of our code in it. It's going to have the composer dependencies, 
the node static, the static assets are going to be built. I do not have to monkey around with Node.js. This is so important. If you were going back in time to look at code that uh, you need to deploy for testing or uh, to give to someone else to run on their machine, whatever the case might be, you can give a deployable build artifact to them. They don't need to install NPM. They don't need to wonder why their version of Node is not working. All of that good stuff, right? It's just going to be deployable for someone to work with immediately. Maybe you throw it on a server. Maybe you're testing out a different server environment or a different server um, company, an app, whatever. You might switch to AWS. You might switch to Fly. You might switch to Forge from somewhere else. And you have this deployable asset you can use to test your code, test to see what it looks like to use those services, right? So for all those reasons, I like to make a uh, buildable artifact that I can always have in my back pocket if I need to. Okay, so what does it look like? So this is um, the same deploy.yaml file. It's another GitHub Action workflow, right? It's the exact same thing as before. I'm only pushing to main, right? I still run all my tests. And then I have a build step, right? So the build step needs tests. So tests are always going to run first. And then we have a build step, and that can build our code, right? So we still need to check out our code in this build step because it's a totally separate step. It's run in a different virtual machine. So we have to recheck out our code, reset up PHP, set up Node because we're going to build static assets. And then I run a build script, and that build script is going to create a zip file for me of my repository, my code. It's going to add in my composer dependencies. It's going to run npm ci and npm run builds, all that stuff. So I have static assets built, all that good stuff. And then it's going to upload that as an artifact to GitHub Actions. And from that artifact, I can then deploy it or not. OK, so this is the deployment process that I like to set up. This gives me the most optionality, right? I can use CI. I can decide when to deploy. And I can build deployable artifacts for use later for all the various use cases that I said before. I want to know what you think. Use those comments. Let me know if you love this, if you hate this, if you do some of this, if you think I've totally missed the point. Definitely let me know.